Kevin shows us the neighborhood where he unwittingly bought the box at an estate sale. It belonged to a Jewish immigrant from Poland who died at the age of 103. The woman's granddaughter sold the box to Kevin. She was told never to open it up that there was something in it called a dibbik and keselim, which is a, a term that we've had kind of a hard time defining, but I guess it means uh, fooling spirits is, is the best definition. Uh, so kind of a playful type of a spirit, getting sick of playful spirits. And some of the things that happened weren't all that pleasant, you know? They weren't things that you just laugh at. Right after he bought the Dybbuk box, Kevin took it to his shop on Burnside Street where he refinished old furniture just like this. He dropped it off in the basement, then he left. Not long after, his assistant called him on his cell phone, incredibly upset, he says, screaming that someone was downstairs. They were swearing and they were breaking things. I turned around and came back down to the shop and she was in my office crying, quivering. She took off. I went to the basement, went downstairs and uh, every light in the basement had been, had been broken. Kevin tells us how minutes after giving the box to his mother as a gift, she suffered a stroke. How he'd sold it at one point and found it back in front of his Burnside shop just three days later. I had a note and the note was very, very cryptic. It said, this has a strange darkness about it. And how everyone in his life who'd been around the box at different times had the same dark nightmares that end the same way. At that point, the person that you're with morphs into this old hag. It's, it's, it's the only way of putting it. That's why it, and then beats the living crap out of you. Within just uh, the same day of receiving this, I've had very good health all my life and all kinds of very intense, very sudden and, and very strong uh, health problems came towards me uh, to the degree that I actually thought that someone might have coated this with cyanide. Jason Haxton owns the box now. That's not it beside him either. Just a perfect replica. The real one? It is stored uh, now, again, away from people, uh, kind of in one of those quiet, dark places. The museum director in Missouri has taken great care to understand and to solve the malevolent mystery he acquired seven years ago. Again, uh, there is, I think, a source of energy that could be explained both scientifically and possibly spiritually. All these different people want access to it, and uh, that in itself tells me there's something going on here um, that is somewhat amazing. Jason has put the Dybbuk box to rest for now. For the whole time that I had this, I never wanted it near uh, my home. Enclosed in an ark made of acacia wood and lined with 24 karat gold, a process he learned through his research. Like Kevin, Jason admits there's something very alive about the Dybbuk box, though neither is ready to call it haunted. 